Hello. Hello. Eleanor here. Trevor here. <laughs> From Topokita. Yes, and welcome to the is it the fourth episode? I thought you were going to ask me what we were called. <laughs> I think it's the fifth episode <laughs> of um, the Small Media Podcast. From Topokita. Um, we're a small creative studio uh, specialising in animation, our own style animation, that is, and we're based in Hartford, UK. Yes. We thought we'd explain who we are because um, we realised on some of the episodes we don't really say who we are. And it could explain why we talk about certain stuff. Yeah. So it's all things sort of small creative studio. Yes. Uh, so until we get a theme tune, we'll have to just explain very quickly. I thought we no, had no. a hit theme tune. Oh, you mean an actual kind I mean, of words. singing? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Sort of Adam Buxton style. So what are we talking about today, Ella? Well, we realised from the last podcast yes. we sent out, it did abruptly so, end. Or it seemed, it sort to. Of cut. seemed like there should have been a part two if it's going to cut that quickly. Yeah. So we're doing a part two. This is a part two. So we're going to go it's, back and relabel the last one, part one. Yes. There is a lot to talk about. Should we say what the subject was? Yep. So it's reversing the decline in creativity in schools. It is quite a big subject. And we also realised in the previous podcast, we didn't really offer huge amounts of solutions. No, but if it was that easy... It, yeah, it, maybe. There has to be the, the will as well, doesn't there? Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, it's true. There's not a magic wand. So we come up with some ideas, but mm. if you think there's going to be some perfect solutions... <laughs> <laughs> so just to, re just to very briefly recap... There is a massive decline, certainly in the UK, in creative subjects in schools, but it's not just restricted to the UK. It's a global problem too. So there's various stats on other countries, the United States, Canada, Australia, all around the world, really. I mean, those, we're just sort of concentrating on the English-speaking ones there, but... Um... Yeah, I mean, it is particularly marked in the UK. I think mm -hmm. that's sort of, if you want to see that as a test case... And to just avoid other countries going down that route. But you it's... just found some great information about Bhutan, though. <laughs> well, Bhutan, I, that was in respect to the way that people see success. Because I guess we get, we're constantly told, you know, with schools, what are you actually trying to achieve? Yeah. And I think with a lot of it, it's about this idea of success that is academic. And it's less so about happiness. Mm. So we get this whole thing about GDP constantly repeated again and again, gross domestic product. Oh, right, yeah. And that's, that's the main marker of, of success. And we talk less about happiness. And I think that if we talked a lot more about success in terms of being happy then maybe certainly the creative subjects would have much more of a part to play and it yeah. would be seen as less unnecessary, which is kind of... Well, it, it's all about the balance, isn't it? Like, yeah. maths is great and everything, and it actually truly is, but so is art. And it, it's yeah. it's a balance to be struck and, the, and each individual sort of finds their own personal combination of their talents and what makes them tick. And school should be about finding that for each individual yeah finding helping them find their own potential and therefore once they leave school they've got all this knowledge and potential to go into industry but anyway Bhutan Bhutan oh yeah oh well yeah because yeah we we're talking about how they measure success and yeah it's constantly about gross domestic products but in Bhutan it's gross national happiness fantastic yeah is their measure of the success of a country if you like and the welfare of its people. And environment. Yeah. So we're sort of saying that if you're going to talk about success in schools, maybe the markers are wrong. It's and that's of, why the STEM yeah. subjects have taken priority. Because it's about measurement, isn't it? It is, And then yes. what you can At measure. Moment, yes. We were just talking, maybe it should be STEAM. Yes. Put an A in there. Put an A in there for arts. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that That'd makes be sense. Much better. <laughs> yeah, because uh, obviously, just from general well being, you can tell that creative subjects and creativity can help 
very much so with well-being where I wouldn't necessarily say maths can step in. No, I found quite a good article and it was about the increased arts education and that sees improvements in writing achievement, emotional and cognitive empathy, engagement in higher education aspirations and also lower disciplinary infractions. So basically... Right. All of those things are what we need in the world in general, just not in <laughs> in yeah. school. So, you know, emotional and cognitive empathy is what we all need right now. The world would be a better place for it, wouldn't it? And the world is changing at such a rate that we need to learn how to... Adapt. Adapt and change rather than sort of be able to recite stuff, which is possibly yes. what it where, used where to it, be. where it comes from these more maybe technical subjects, but there is a lot of crossover as well. And maybe we mentioned that before, but there's significance in the crossover of subjects between even maths and the art subjects. So if you remove the creative subjects, you're removing a vital part of, of a child's development, because even if they do go into a very sort of technical area, if they have creative thought, that is going to push them a lot further forward. You hear of these sort of child prodigies that are really good at doing one thing and they became they become world famous for it sometimes but actually they have trouble later in life because they don't have the creative thought to move on from that particular thing so what are some of the solutions Eleanor just to put you on the spot <laughs> <laughs> thank you um well we we're talking earlier about measurement and yes. value yes you know to be able to these subjects to be able to compete within the kind of school budget, mm. which is essentially what it's about, the budget mm. and time allotted, yes. it needs to have a value allotted. And mm. there is, there could be problems doing that, but at the same time, some kind of measurement has to happen yes. for this subject to be able to compete, basically. I mean, there are still grades in creative subjects, aren't there? So there, yeah. there are measurements for creativity. So although it seems as if you know, maths and sciences have a better statistical way of measuring success, if you like, mm, mm. that still those grades exist in creative subjects. So there's, there is that way of measuring it. Yeah, it, it's just that everyone, I think, would get something or do does get something from the creative arts, whether they're good at the arts, you know, singing or music mm. or theatre or yes. drawing or not. So I think... The fact of actually doing it rather than achieving a high grade is in itself um, of val of great value. So there's there's another marker to be measured, I guess. Then is the amount of time apportioned during a week for creative subjects. Yes. Yeah. So that in itself could be something that's emphasised when their schools are sort of demonstrating their what their syllabus is all about to parents and showing what level of a, uh, is a portion of what time is apportioned to creativity during a school week yes and yeah. put placing a value on that i think that's that's down to governments and schools to promote creativity as a necessary part yes yeah, for a week. sort of well balanced um you know critical thinking yeah creative person <laughs> <laughs> last year for the uk economy um, the creative arts brought in about 124 billion. That's amazing. Right? So it's that's more than the life sciences. It's amazing, yeah. and and uh, basically, you can come up if you can come up with an idea, a great idea, you've you've made something out of nothing. Yeah, that, that's what's so incredible about well, the creative arts. Yeah, well, that's that's true, isn't it? Well, well, that's exactly what we do with very few resources. We can actually create something. <laughs> so if you want to kickstart an economy. Creative subjects are your yeah, go-to because they, yeah, yeah. with other industries, you need so many materials to actually get things moving and get things produced. Yeah, all manufacturing processes yeah, and yeah. yeah, all sorts. Yeah, yeah. So, creative industries, you can literally make something out of nothing. You can make it up. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, if you, th as an example, if you think about J.K. Rowling, you know, she sat down and with a piece of paper and a pencil and wrote something and from that created a huge industry huge it's industry. just mind-blowing so many so many jobs yes so so much money flowing, Films and flowing all through. Sorts of things. yeah so yeah. and i think if people saw 
creativity in a much broader context, not just art. I think when people just think of art, they think maybe it's going to be a bit of a struggle. Yeah, it's which, a kind of combination, know. isn't it? It's yeah. art in combination with with other subjects. So it can lead to design, it can lead to all sorts of things. And yes, like you say, in combination with other things. For instance, my career was all combining art with computers and creating effects. So, And there's so many varied job opportunities mm -hmm. within the creative industries that just to think of it as art is a little narrow. So I think that needs to be promoted as well. That's something that we need to kind of consider. So there's a glint of light on the horizon, isn't there? So, yes, here in the UK, the new government um, is investigating into the curriculum and whether it's actually too narrow. Hmm. So that's fantastic to hear because, as we were just discussing, it's the balance that mm -hmm. is going to produce a balanced individual, the kind of person you'll want to employ, basically. Yeah, let's, so let's hope they really make a, a good job of kind of promoting the creative industries yeah because that's that's important for parents and the way they think about their children's education and they can see a route forward for them yeah 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 but that's some of some of the things that we think would help so if people want to follow what we're up to how can they do that yes I well, mean, they'd want to obviously but obviously hopefully yeah mm -hmm. absolutely but also please do um put your suggestions or any comments oh yeah if you're listening on a well, there's usually a comments box. Yeah, I mean, in some not, of them, it's YouTube, it is. Podcast. We're on YouTube. Um, but if not, we've got this podcast is on our blog on our site. And it would be fantastic if you could sign up to our mailing list. That would be the ultimate. That's ultimate because you actually get to find out what we're up to. And we talk about new releases of our stuff and offers and all sorts of goodies. So that's the place to go. Do you want to say what the site is? We will put a link in the description, but you like saying what? Yeah, so it's topocketer.com. Spelled. T-A-P-O-C-K-E-T-A dot com. Wow, there you go. So uh, we look forward to speaking to you soon. Okay, thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.